All right. So, Terry, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Really appreciate that. Viewers, this is a really interesting situation. We're doing a, a two-way interview across half of the country. So Terry's in his Sportsman in Indiana, Elkhart, and I'm in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, you guys did a great job sending the, um, the questions. So we're going to answer a bunch of those today. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Scott. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So, a lot of questions. This, uh, this, uh, people are really curious about the sportsman. Um, and I've kind of broken this down into several uh, categories. We'll start with chassis. Um, we're very familiar with the ProMaster. Everybody talks about the Sprinter, uh, but this is a Ford Transit based. Um, the questions coming up, um, like from Ralph Keith, one of our viewers, uh, asks about will this model be available in all wheel drive? And four by four, I'll I'll say as well. What's the status on the chassis? Well, Ford does call it all wheel drive. It's not officially four by four. Uh, it's like your SUV that's all wheel drive. It does go through the snow. It does everything your SUV would do all wheel drive. It's not technically four by four. But all wheels are pulling, so your traction is definitely better than a two wheel drive. They show it going on a mountain through snow in the middle of nowhere and having a ball with it. So it does the job. It's just not four by four. Okay. That makes sense. Um, a lot of folks had questions on, um, on engines. So EcoBoost, gas, diesel. I know there's a whole, an hour we could spend on that stuff, but from a high level, what's the sportsman built on that you guys are providing at this point? There's several engine models, even on the EcoBoost. We're using the 3.5 liter EcoBoost motor. It actually has more torque than the diesel motor does have on Ford. So um, in saying that, the EcoBoost motor is an all-around motor. You know, in the past, you had to get diesel if you wanted to climb mountains and things. This EcoBoost gas engine does a better job in the mountains than the diesel motor does. So it gives us a single engine that does everything, uh, and you don't have to worry about ever the diesel emissions, the diesel maintenance and diesel fuel cost is higher. So it really cuts it down to a single format that does everything. A lot of the performance, a lot of the benefits of diesel without the complexities. Uh, and Terry had mentioned there's a, you know, there's a, a large Ford uh, dealer service network, which is fantastic. Um, I can post folks the um, gross vehicle rate uh, weight and the gross cargo weight here. So you guys can take a look at that. Um, very important stuff not to overload your vehicle, right? <laughs> absolutely. And we have a lot of carrying capacity. We do weigh out on this particular model right now, the way it's setting right at 8,200 pounds on a 10,360. So we have, you know, over 2,200 pounds or so left over to load it up with all the cabinetry we have. And you have almost 5,000 pounds of towing capacity with the GCWR that they give you that's 13,000 pounds. So it, it's capable of doing anything you want to do with it, uh, which, is more than most of the other vehicles have when, at the end of the day. I think it's even way more than my ProMaster, which um, that's really great to know. It's easy to bring your stuff with you, right? <laughs> um, so let's let's switch gears to electrical. Um, lithium, solar, huge, huge topics. I'm reading off my iPad here. So Nancy uh, Hench, H-E-N-C-H, hope I say that right. Um, has a question on on the solar panels, and and I know you have very specific um, thoughts on the solar. So maybe just give us a round out on solar with the sportsman, and then move to the lithium because that's what people really are kind of eager about. Solar is a great item, but I think people are a little mythical about it, thinking that you know it's it'll cure all your problems and keep the batteries charged forever. You know the best scenario in solar is you're going to get 20 to 22 amps of charge off of what you put on the roof for a thousand several thousand dollars basically so you know my theory is you put your money where you really need it and with the alternators and the things that can really give you a bang for the buck for a similar cost i'd go an alternator a dual alternator system before i spent the money on solar now somebody that's gonna leave the vehicle sitting and they just want to keep the battery charged yeah, solar will do that, but you can hit the battery switch and just turn it off. <laughs> it's pretty easy to do too. So, right. Yeah. 
And we've talked in the past, Terry, about um, again, solar is kind of a nice to have, but with a with a good quality lithium energy system, you don't need that. That then frees up the top to put you know cargo, kayaks, things like that up there, right? Absolutely. We have the roof totally clean on this vehicle. I'm actually creating a power over luggage rack. I don't believe climbing a chintzy ladder to get up on the roof and drag something down that's 100 pounds is a good idea. So we're going to make the luggage rack come to you and you get to load your kayaks and things on it, hit a button and it'll pull it back yes. up on the roof. Wow, that will be that would be cool. Can you put one of those on a Travato? I don't know. <laughs> that's cool. I like that idea a lot. Um, so again, folks, you're going to have a lot of uh, questions on the electrical and, and the um, lithium system. So my advice is get some basics done here, but then reach out to Embassy and really get those uh, those questions answered in detail. Um, Terry, let's switch gears from electrical to HVAC and Four Season. Um, viewer um, Donna Delanti, hope I'm saying that right, who's been a really vigorous uh, commenter lately. Um, she is uh, in the market for a rig. Donna asks about the four season capability. And I know the um, your other vehicles, different floor plan are, are very four season. What's a sportsman on four season? It's, it's built exactly the same. Uh, I, the water tanks are under this sofa. Um, this sofa is much larger than our other sofa per the size of the vehicle. So there's actually more room under there uh, to spread them out even further. So it's the format is built exactly the same as the PRL and the TRL. So all your water's inside, all your valves are inside. Uh, it's truly a four season vehicle as well. That's uh, really great to hear. And that's one of your you know claims to fame and the, the industry is just kind of catching up to you guys. It's really kind of interesting. Um, talking about four season, we got to talk about insulation. We're going to talk about heat and AC in a second, but tell us about the insulation. You guys have a very different approach to this as well, right? It is, and I get a lot of comments from customers and customers do their homework. You know, this day and age with YouTube and, and all the information available, it's amazing some of the emails I get and the depth of knowledge that I get from the customer. At the end of the day, we stack eight layers of uh, industrial grade bubble foil aircraft insulation. The biggest plus to this, and I've got people telling me they're doing wool fibers with this company and styrofoam in the roof with this company. You never want to foam your vehicle. These unibody constructed vehicles are a little thinner metal, and that's how they do what they do and carry what they carry. If you get an expandable foam behind a nook and cranny, you'll see a bump on the outside. And I've seen vehicles that look like they're total where they came in and spray foamed the inside. And when it expands, oh, it's, it's not pretty. Oh, that's <laughs> so, the exact opposite problem of hail, putting dents in, this is dents out for that. <laughs> yeah, oh, I've seen some real ugly things. So our insulation doesn't absorb moisture. It doesn't wick any odors. It doesn't rust the vehicle from the inside out. And it does its job insulating the vehicle. We've proved that time and time again. I had a customer call recently and. He was up in Wisconsin and woke up in the morning, had the heater on low, walking around with the porch and tent out. He walked outside and there's five inches of snow on the porch and tent, the vehicle, and he never knew it. And the heater was on low. And, you know, it's doing its job. It's doing what it's set out to do. That is that is crazy great. Um, again, I think you guys are just ahead of the industry in a lot of ways on that whole subject. Um, speaking of snow and cold weather, uh, tell us a little bit about the heat. Is this following your uh, S-Bar Hydronic? I hope I got that right. Uh, yes, and how does is, that system work in general? S-Bar is a heater that was designed for Volkswagens, like I said, uh, many years ago to give them heat because the engine didn't create enough heat. So it takes the fuel of the vehicle and heats up aluminum that antifreeze is pumped over and pumped through the engine and through heater cores and around the water heater and the gasoline of the vehicle is so efficient it uses a gallon of fuel in about 20 hours and it uses less than an amp of dc power and it gives you all your heat you know we've heard the truma things and different brands out there electric heat anytime you use electric to heat anything it's a horrible power consumption it's terribly inefficient yep the s bar hydronic is the most efficient form of heat without carrying lp that you can possibly put on a vehicle and that comes standard with a sportsman then, right? Yes, absolutely. And so speaking of heat, hot water, how does that work in the sportsman? It's the same as the PRL and TRL. It's a six gallon suburban six or three way water heater. It uses the engine to heat the water. 
it uses electric when you plug in your cord, 120 volts to heat the water, and it uses the hydronic to heat the water. So we're technically three-way, but we do not use the LP part of that water heater, which it is equipped with. So again, we get to turn it backwards and service it from the inside. There's no holes through the vehicle because we don't use LP. That's really great. Um, so the opposite of heat is cold air. So a lot of yes. questions. Um, in fact, you may know these folks, uh, Terry, Daniel and Carol, uh, again, reading off my iPad here, uh, they're coming to see you in a few weeks um, into Elkhart, and they're asking about the AC system, uh, Daniel and Carol. So thank you for that uh, question. Uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about your approach to the uh, AC in the Sportsman. Well, to keep the ceiling clear of anything on the roof, we took the same roof air conditioner that's in our other models. That's the Toyota Prius compressor air conditioning system that's automotive. And we just split it. We took it off the roof, and part of it's in this cabinet next to me. And it's ducked uh -huh. through these ducts here. The other part of it's down below the vehicle uh, behind the axle in front of the spare tire. And it's a split system version of what was normally on the roof that is a split system also, parts above the roof, parts below. We just didn't put it on the roof. So the cold air is ducted then, or is it coming out of the cabinet there? It's through two big vents right here, and you can blow one backwards, one forward. So if you're here on the sofa, it's just ducted through this cabinet, and there's not, your roof's clean. Innovation at Embassy RV continues, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that is really cool. Um, talking about HVAC, we've got to talk about windows a little bit. Um, we had uh, Doug Manick, M-A-N-C-K, if I got that right, asks about the windows. So how are those, you guys are using a window van, but they do open? Tell us about the windows. I order all of them window vans that don't open because the factory windows that open, I'm not real fond of how they open. Because of our blind system and the way we build it into the wall to help control heat through the windows, any other window that opens interferes with my blind system. So we order a window from AM Auto Glass out of the Carolinas, and it comes from the Netherlands, I believe. It's beautiful laser cut glass that's a slider and screen that does not interfere with this setup right here. So that's what's so important to me. So we can change this window and this window to slider screen windows and the blinds still work exactly the way they're designed to work to help block anything coming out. But we also have the most unique venting system in the industry. And I did this on Mercedes vans for years. We have four vents built into the sidewall roof of this vehicle. There's two in, two out. They're brushless computer fans on steroids. They're actually 130 CFM each. They draw all together on low about two and a half amps which is incredible. And you can dry your hair with it. Rich, you hear that? <laughs> Rich is our camera operator. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. You have a very handsome shoulder, by the way. <laughs> you can have a little fun with it. I know. This is all about having fun. We learn, we share. This is what we do here. Um, so the windows open. That's great. And thank you for keeping the aesthetics. Uh, if, you have if you haven't seen the videos on the... Um, some of the Thor products, I could not figure out the screens on the on the windows. It was maddening. Um, maybe I needed user education, which is probably true. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, the galley, and then we'll go to the bathroom. So, looking at the galley, um, one one viewer asked about um, the cooktop. So, you guys uh, don't have propane in the rigs. You've been um, you know propane for a long time. I'll be right back. Uh oh, <laughs> he's gonna make us popcorn. I think. <laughs> Uh, the cooktop. The cooktop. Look at that. It's the Suburban's uh, I can't see induction. It. You need to sit down. I can't see oh. you in the frame. There induction you go. cooktop that stows away in any of our storage in our cabinets. And this gives you what everybody wants. So I have these for you now. This is your cooktop. We just don't want to build it into the counter because it keeps the counter so clean. When you need it, it's here. You've got it. It sets up. You can cook with it. We have plugs there to plug it into. So this is the same thing you would build into the counter, just not build into the counter. And that makes those stores easily. It's electric, so it's super efficient. And induction just boils water way faster, so, right? So this, an this is the answer to that. Okay, thank you. That helps a lot. Um, so speaking of galley, um, let's see what else we want to ask about there. So we'll talk about, really liked your approach to the, to the refrigerator, which is you're using the Dometic 106 can um, cooler. And is that a freezer? Can you... So you can crank it up and it's a freezer as well. So a freezer yeah. or cooler. Um, and tell us about that. Um, you mentioned in your in your video a little bit, but just give us an update on that. Uh, 
Um, we're trying to make space for bicycles and all kinds of things in this vehicle. We want the outside experience to be as much as the inside. So we're making the TV spin around and slide out the door. The chest freezer and refrigerator is right here beside me. It's actually a seat when you want it to be also. It works beautifully as a, another place for somebody to sit. But we have it where it'll actually spin inside and outside. And you can have the awning out and have the doors open and be by the beach. And you can access everything without jumping in and out of the vehicle every time. Other folks can sit here and watch the TV and do whatever they want to do. So it kind of opens up the space a little bit more and you're not jumping in and out so much to get something out of the refrigerator. And I love the fact that I think you mentioned in your video, you guys have a YouTube video on this on your uh, YouTube channel. Um, this is a great point. I never thought about this, but imagine loading up the cooler in your house and then carrying it to the rig and taking that camping versus, you know, loading uh, a whole bunch of, you know, sacks from the, the house uh, way more. And then just take the thing to the beach, the, like the campsite, wherever. Um, if it's a little bit, it's really a smart move. Um, so good job on that. Anytime we can get versatility, it's a win and you get to use this. You can go on your pontoon boat and Take this and plug it into the pontoon and carry it right onto the pontoon and everything you have on it's good to go with you. That is super cool. Um, maybe one last thing, which kind of leads us into the bathroom, but tell us about the fresh water and and gray water. You guys have a very different approach in general. We've talked about your uh, yacht bladder style. Is, is a sportsman equipped with a similar situation? Exactly the same. Okay. Exactly the same. It's all under the sofa I'm sitting on. It's above floor. It's the yacht bag system where they they're a little more apart because this sofa is a little longer, so they barely overlap at all. And you have 23 and a half gallons, both gray and fresh, uh, under the sofa, and it's a bladder system. Uh, it's just incredible how it works. That's that's fantastic. Um, which leads us to the black tank. Everybody loves to talk about the black tank and going potty. Um, you're uh, what, what kind of toilet are you using in this in the sportsman? Uh, What's starting to win over on other toilets, and we use all of them, basically, the Nature's Head compost. We do the uh, Thetford cassette toilets that we modify. This is the Labio dry flush toilet. Basically, there's no black water. There's no fresh water flushing. There's no water at all. You use the toilet. You hit a button. It vacuums and twists and sucks it down, and it does that 17 times. And Put a twist lock on it and it throws away in the trash so it's a diaper genie on steroids is what i call it it works just like the diaper genie uh so you don't smell the dirty diapers each time you flush it's separated and spun and, and no odor there's no bowl to clean it's actually a really cool toilet now somebody with a bladder problem may not like it you'll go through a lot of bag systems but uh you know, a lot of times you're at an RV place, you're using the RV restrooms, you're not always using your restroom. So it's a great alternative and the easiest, less messy system you could possibly put in a vehicle. You can take that toilet and put it on your pontoon boat and use it on your pontoon boat too. Uh, <laughs> it's very easily removable and it's it can be used in tents. It can be used, it's actually uh, a very multitasking toilet. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Mama yeah. likes that. <laughs> um, one viewer asked about the shower. Now we know on your other models, the shower is kind of in the middle of the uh, the bathroom there, and have a very clever way of doing the shower. How how does the shower work in the sportsman? Is there one? We offer that as an option. We okay. this particular model is like we showed at the show last year in Tampa. You know, we have the big patio that's all composite. And can't hurt it with water or anything. You know, and a lot of customers were fine with that. You know, they're going to rinse off and stuff and you know so we have that as a standard we're trying to hold price a little bit on this but we option you can take it up as far as you want to take it you can go with the standard shower if you want. okay that's great um so let's talk about cabin and exterior and then we'll round out with the warranty and pricing um so on the cabin the it's a single sofa uh, that converts to a bed 76 long 46 wide which is just about a full-size bed the TV pivots, um, uh, so you can view it inside and outside, which is very clever. Um, the tables, are you using the L Lagoon style table? We offer the Lagoon style table. We have this beautiful uh, countertop right here next to me, so it works pretty well. So we can do a fixed table, we can do a Lagoon table. You know, we leave that up to each customer.
customer to decide how they want that to be. And we can accommodate any way you want the table to happen. Okay, that's great. Um, so let's imagine we are stepping outside of the rig. Um, round clearance, uh, well, let's talk about the roof rack real quick. You'd mentioned uh, this, this cargo system. So maybe explain that uh, one more time. And what system is it? The, uh, the no ladder needed roof rack. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I love kayaking and stuff. I, you know, I put twin 55 pound thrust trolling motors on my kayak and a lithium ion battery with it. So, you know, I like playing with toys a little, but I don't want to climb. I'm, I did turn 61 this uh, last month. <laughs> so I don't want to climb on ladders either and carry a heavy kayak off the roof and worry about tearing up the vehicle by slipping a little bit, climbing up a chintzy ladder. So I have a design that we're in the process of generating that right now where it'll be a military grade actuator that actually takes the luggage rack and with roller systems will drop it over the driver's side of the vehicle and it will come down over the edge so you can set your kayak on and strap it down and hit a button and it'll pull it right back up and nest it back up on the road. That is so cool. Um, that is That would be a reason to get a sportsman. Ground clearance, um, a lot of people are putting on sumo springs these days. What, what's your status on ground clearance and making that a little more ruggedish, if you will? Yeah, the, the transit, even all wheel drive, isn't any taller. So one thing Ford's told us is the all-wheel drives are the same height as a non-all-wheel drive. It doesn't change the height of them at all. So, you know, like four-wheel drive, you're used to them raising up six inches or so. It's the same height no matter which it is. So with the running boards being at a normal height that helps you step in and out, you have eight inches of ground clearance to the bottom of the running board, which is the lowest thing under the side of the vehicle. Um, you can go sumo springs and actually get the vehicle to come up a couple it's inches. Sumo o'clock. springs, if you wish to do that, but that's how you get a little bit more ground clearance if you want. Okay, and you guys can put those on if that's an option the customer wants. Yeah, they're super easy options. Do they're great products, so uh, we offer that on all of our vehicles. Uh, you can always assist with sumos. Okay, um, awning awning is an option, or does that come standard? It's on this one. It is an option always. You know that everybody wants them. We are showing the carefree awning on this. It's power with no legs that drop to the side of the, the vehicle, and it does have a light on it, a strip light on it. It's a nice awning that powers out. We needed that when the TV's out and pointing outside. You do need the awning to shade the TV if you're yeah. in the sun and stuff. So it just helps with that as well. Okay, that's really really great. So kind of rounding out um, uh, warranty. So a viewer Richard D asks about the warranty. So there's the vehicle chassis warranty, then there's the embassy build. Uh, so maybe just give us a little detail on both. Everybody works this way. The vehicle chassis have a dual system warranty. They have the warranty of the vehicle, which is three years, thirty six thousand. Then they have the drivetrain warranty, always that's five year, hundred thousand. Uh, we do three year, thirty six thousand for our workmanship. Everything we put in the vehicle is warranted by the manufacturer of that component. And what we promise is we buy from the best vendors in the industry and out of the industry to get the best warranties we can get. So the two last big, big topics, um, price and how can I get one? How soon can I get one? So maybe let's start with the, the build time. So it's a little bit of a industry thing right now. Chassis are sort of hard to get. Again, you guys are just focused this only on the, the uh, transit chassis, right? So what's the, what's the build time? We to ordered start? a bunch of chassis that we thought would be four styles that everybody would want. Well, the Ford has so many options, nobody can predict what everybody wants. So uh, we are sold out on all the ones that we've ordered so far. What we're now doing is taking a $4,500 deposit. We send you all the information on Ford with what we know everybody does want, and you get to pick out your color all your options. If you want adaptive cruise control, you want lane keeping, you want all wheel drive, all that's available to you to basically order the chassis exactly the way you want in the color you want. And we don't charge any extra for any special colors or anything. You get all the colors of the transit in 2020. So you get your vehicle your way. It takes forward about 12 to 14 weeks to get us that vehicle. Once we place the order, they'll give us a VIN number about you know, four weeks into the process, which we issue to you, you know, that's your vehicle. It's got your name on it. It's yours. Uh, so we're, we're changing that and trying to take advantage of everything Ford offers and not leave anything on the table and say, well, you can only have A or B when there's a whole lot more choices than A or B. 
Yeah, super smart. And uh, that either it gets you all the options, which probably increases the price, or if you don't want all that stuff, um, then that helps keeps the price down, right? We're not even limited to our what we call the basic setup. If somebody says, I don't want that, I'm looking to get in at a price, we can do that for you. And it's it's not a hassle, really. You know, it's what Ford created. Let's work with it and give everyone what they want and have the vehicle that you want, not the one that I think you want. Yeah, and I love that. That's really smart. Um, so let's talk about price points and, and options. Um, how you're kind of putting this in as you said, a lot of these rigs now are well north of $100,000. Um, a couple things I like about the way you are pricing things, and that is you're not doing the typical MSRP game that I see all the time at the RV shows. It's $180,000 MSRP, and I'm a nice dealer. I'm going to take 50 grand right off of, you know, so it's like 130, which is just you know, fake pricing, I, I think of it. So tell us about your pricing program. What's kind of a starting at and a maxed out uh, uh, sportsman? How's that, how's that working? This is a maxed out sportsman. There's a few other things you could probably put on it. We have 450 amp hour UL listed battery on board. You could go 600, which is going to be another 3000 or so dollars. But this one runs right now. 108, I think, and some change. I don't remember what the change is off the top of my head, but we're around 108 on this vehicle right now. You can get it under 100,000. You know, the base model of this is around 99 something right now that it falls out with that battery on board. Uh, but with the porch and tent and all the things we've added awnings and things, it's this one's at one, around 108 right now. So if you took some of those, like uh, the porch and tent, really cool for some users, really not cool for others. Like for my situation, the porch and tent wouldn't work because I moved too often. That would be reduced off that. Um, Absolutely. That's about 4000 It's thirty nine ninety five off the price. So you can get it down to, you know, lower prices and you know, there's other ways to go even lower. You know, I try to tell everybody, you know, we want this to make about your experience, not what we predict you want. So we've built vehicles in the below 80,000 range. You know, not everybody needs lithium ion, even though it's a cool thing and everyone's on it. We have vehicles out there that are 10 years old, still running off of AGM batteries and working beautifully. So, you know, sometimes somebody comes to me and they have a budget. Well, we can achieve that budget and you still get this amazing vehicle built in an amazing way, but you just don't get lithium if you don't really need it. So I try to really match the vehicle to what your lifestyle needs are. And, and I think that's important without changing the, the core quality. Yeah. And I've always maintained on the channel that it's really about the floor plan and how you're going to use the floor plan as you live, work, play in your rig and really thinking that through and uh you know if you need a large bed maybe the sportsman model is not the, the way to go the other uh, prl trl models are um but if you're you know boon boon whacking or boondocking or <laughs> hunting fishing tailgating this is a perfect model um and a lot of options it sounds like and the best way to really have that conversation is to just reach out to terry and the embassy rv team and really go through what it is you're trying to accomplish uh, what are your priorities? And uh, this has a lot of flexibility built into it, it sounds like to me. And that's our controlled custom part of it. Our goal is to give you as close to your dream as we can within reason. I tell everybody always that sometimes it kind of strays way off into uh, that world that is kind of make believe <laughs> that we want to keep it real. We want to make it where it's affordable for you too. You know, our custom doesn't break the bank. We we do it so efficiently that we can we can give you your dream without going crazy with it. And I think that's what's important. Well, and the fact that you even offer that is pretty amazing. I mean, if you call the bank the big guys uh, and say, "Hey, I want to do a special," they'd be like, mm -hmm. you know, "What color do you want? Silver or silver? Your choice." <laughs> Just like, poking a little fun at them. But well, Terry, I know you're super busy. Um, a lot of folks said, um, uh, "Yeah." Me, uh, we're thankful that you showed up at the RV Super Show, even without Van. So a big uh, hats off to you for that. Um, many folks had really nice things to say about, um, you know, Al's passing. You guys have gone through a lot of change the last 90 days. Um, one viewer actually had a recommendation, which is to name a, a, a van after uh, after Al, uh, kind of a special edition, Fortis, a fortified Fortis. Special fiction, so maybe maybe that's in the future as well. Um, but you know the the viewers are just a really pulling for the embassy team and for you, and are excited about this new um, this whole new production line, the 2020 program, a new floor plan. Um, just our hats are off to you. You guys continue to innovate crazy, 
And uh, if, boy, you know, if you went to the RV Super Show, there is not a lot of innovation in the industry. It's just a lot of me too. And you guys are not down that path, which uh, which I appreciate. That's why I just love being a partner of you because you're really taking it to the industry and giving customers what they want, which is, um, I just love that. So a lot of this is from customers' input is how this was created. So it's, it's, it's a real RV that's inputted and kind of designed around what our customers said they would really like in this vehicle. And that's where this came from, not somebody else. Yeah, makes total sense. Voice of the customer is so important. Well, no, you're super busy. Thank you again. Um, this has been kind of a fun experiment, um, an interview, even though we're, I guess, inches apart. We're actually a thousand miles apart, which is kind of cool. Um, we're going to get this posted up very soon because the interest in the sportsman is just off the charts. Thank you, viewers. And thank you, Terry. Thank you. Rick. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I had a great deal of fun making it. First time we've tried that and it worked out pretty good. What do you think? Um, back and forth with Terry Minix, a VP at Embassy RV, talking about the brand new floor plan, the Sportsman, based on the Ford Transit chassis. Um, thanks to you, each and every one of you, for sending in so many great questions. Couldn't quite get them all in, but we got the basic flavor, right? To help you determine if the Sportsman is right for you, uh, potentially. My advice would be, is if you are really serious about checking out the Sportsman, uh, while I love you posing the questions and stuff to me, the real answers lie with Terry and the embassy team. So reach out to them, here's their contact information, and um, get your questions answered. Um, you have done an amazing job as an audience. Um, we have basically helped sell out the uh, 2020 run in many cases, and uh, that is an amazing accomplishment. So thank you, thank you. And to our Embassy RV customers, you know how great those rigs are, right? And uh, Terry and the team, just again, thank you for letting us uh, share uh, these learnings with, with, with the audience here, it's been amazing. So again, just really thank you for being out there. And um, if you got something out of this, give it a thumb up. Um, I sure appreciate that comment as always. And um, subscribe. Our viewer subscriptions are going like crazy. And if you are into the RV lifestyle, if you're into van life, if you're curious about RVing, if you're no time, part time, full time like me in my Winnebago Travado, uh, then this channel is for you. We've got a whole lot more content coming up, a whole lot more travel content coming up in particular. It's kind of like, what's the point of being in an RV if you don't see where we're going, right? So working on that real hard for you guys. Uh, so again, would love for you to subscribe and uh, check out my website, Go Small, Live Large. Going to be posting some uh, unique content there as well. And Instagram, if you're into Instagram, I'm posting nearly daily there and it's almost kind of a real-time communication uh, platform. YouTube's a little delayed because it's video format, blah, blah. Uh, but check out Instagram and I would sure love to see you there as well. Just go to uh, Instagram, search Go Small, Live Large. We should pop up pretty quick. So as always, I wish you to grab your RV freedom, get on it. The year is only six weeks old, 2020. Here we go. See ya. Thank you, viewers, and thank you, Terry. Thank you, Rich, for holding the camera mostly still. <laughs> <laughs> you can rule. I'll talk to you soon. See you later, Scott. See you. That was perfect. Okay. Well, well I'm bringing some sort of device next time to hold this sucker because my arm's cramping I up like crazy. Well, I figured I could do it for a while, and I did. But, boys, <laughs> i got to shake it out. It's really bad.